Some scholars have suggested that the meaning of Jerusalem is sacred peace. Indeed, the prophet Isaiah describes Jerusalem as the sacred or holy city. This seems a little ironic when you consider that for thousands of years, men have fought and died to control this site. The history of Jerusalem extends back to the beginnings of the Old Testament. Jerusalem is mentioned in the book of Genesis. Melchizedek, king of Salem, ruled and was also a priest of God here. Besides a few comments in a 14th century BC Egyptian manuscript, not much is known about Jerusalem in its early years. It's not until 400 years of slavery in Egypt ends that Israel returns to the land that God had promised Abraham. Joshua's army launches an attack from the east to take back this land. News of Joshua's invasion arrives at Jerusalem, which is controlled by the Jebusites. They join forces with other city-states and defeat Joshua's army in open battle. Joshua then captured the surrounding country and ignored Jerusalem, turning his attention north. Jerusalem remained under Jebusite control throughout the period of the Judges and during Saul's reign. The city for many years was thought to be impregnable. Deep ravines and high city walls protected the Jebusites from foreign invaders. When King David arrived on the scene, they boasted that the blind and lame could defend her city walls. David realised they were right. So he and his men outsmarted the locals and snuck up the water shaft to successfully capture the city from the inside. David developed the city's defences, built a palace for himself and established Jerusalem as the political capital. His son Solomon would develop the city into the spiritual capital. Solomon built God's temple. Jewish people believed that God dwelt in the temple, therefore making the site and the city sacred. But not even the construction of the temple brought peace. After Solomon's death, the country divided into two warring tribes, Israel in the north and Judah in the south. Then the king of Israel set up other holy sites in the north so his people didn't need to worship God in Jerusalem. In the ensuing years, Jerusalem didn't see too many peaceful days. The city's defences were no match for the mighty armies of the Babylonians, Persians and Romans. They each, in turn, destroyed everything in their path. During the Roman occupation, there was an uneasy peace. They appointed Herod to be the king of the Jews. The Jewish people despised him because he wasn't a Jew. He was an Edomite, a descendant of Esau, Jacob's older brother. Herod the Great was ruthless, but also industrious. Ruthless because he would kill anyone who opposed him, including the baby boys in Bethlehem. And he was industrious, because he began a whole array of building programs in Jerusalem and around the country to win the people over. The largest, most expensive and elaborate construction was the second temple, which was the focus of Jewish worship. Into this relative peace and prosperity, Jesus ministered. The Gospel of John particularly focuses on Jesus' ministry in Jerusalem. Jesus witnessed to locals, performed miracles, healed the sick and debated with the religious leaders. On one occasion, he spoke of the destruction of the temple and Jerusalem, encouraging people to flee the city. His words proved to be prophetic. During 66 AD, the Jewish people revolted against the Romans. So in 70 AD, the Roman general Titus destroyed the city and the temple. Titus left three towers standing. Only one remains today. This was to remind future generations of the past glory of Jerusalem and the might of the Roman army.
Since then, Jerusalem has never really found peace. Muslim armies came and established their own holy sites in the city. Then Crusader armies arrived, then the Turks, then the British and Anzacs during World War I, and finally the Israelis captured it from the Jordanians in the 1967 war. The effects of these wars can still be seen today. And now an uneasy peace remains. Various religious and political groups all wait for their opportunity to take control of the city. So does Jerusalem live up to the meaning of its name, Sacred Peace? If the meaning is found in the place itself, then clearly no. It may be considered holy or sacred by various religions, but it has really been peaceful. So the meaning of Jerusalem really doesn't come from its name, but from the events that occurred in her. Christians believe that it was here that God brought his people back into a peaceful relationship with himself through the death and resurrection of his son, Jesus the Christ. As the angels declared at his birth, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to men on whom his favour rests. Jesus brought a sacred, holy peace, not to Jerusalem, but between God and his people. As the Apostle Paul later wrote to the Christians living in Rome, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Jerusalem, sacred peace, not because it's been peaceful, but because of one event that took place in the city 2,000 years ago.